On to round 15. We got Roaring Moon uh, versus Giratina V-Star. Lots of Giratina, Giratina V-Star, Lost Zone uh, goodness in Charlotte. Uh, like, lots of it. Uh, it's a really, really solid deck, very for sure. That... Um, uh, I was really interested in Aaron's list. It has a lot of intricacies. It's not that specific. Uh, that can... well, let's take a look at the prize cards. It'll be interesting to see who's actually going first. It does look like Aaron. He's going to start things off here. Let's we'll see. Attack. Where's the prize cards? Yeah, that seems to be. The prize cards. We've got everything upside down on the Roaring Moon. <laughs> Uh, Dark Patch on Roaring Moon, you, you definitely don't want to see that. Um, I mean, it's uh, a way Dark Patch lets you go find a Dark Energy and attach it to one of your Pokemon in play. A uh, way of getting Energy Acceleration out there. Um, the Forest Seal Stone can be detrimental, just depending on if you need to get something out of your deck or not. Um, are there other decks? Caleb asked, are there other decks outside of Gratina that are super prevalent? Yeah, I mean, you've got the Charizard deck, the Maridon deck, there's the Shin Pal deck, there's the Gardevoir deck. Um, but I, I would say that there's been not, there's not a deck that has been as like, that has stayed in the competitive scene as long as Giratina has. Like Giratina has been in, uh, you know, out for, you know, a year and a half now, I think it was, um, maybe a, a year, and, you know, decks come and go, but this one seems to have been around, like, stayed around quite a while, so, um, now, next year in 2025, when the F regulation cards rotate out, it'll go away, um, but for now, I mean, I really think it's here to stay. It is going to lose. So Battle VIP Pass is a card uh, that's an E card, E regulation. That goes away in April. But uh, really, for the most part, I think there will be some cards that it can use to stay in the there. Yeah, nothing as crazy dominant as this. Be the typical inclusion now. A lot of players eyeing up double Primarans and single save live. Uh, Isaiah has had to make some cuts in order to add some of those uh, fringe inclusions. It's not too bad though for the rest of the cards there. It's gonna be interesting to see who's actually going first. It does look like Aaron. It's gonna start things off here. You won't this be able to get that good attack, but these are two decks that really like to go. Roaring Moon so, using Nest uh, Ball. Players, Let's go get uh, another basic. That we've Maybe seen another Roaring Moon. That's very probably starts, potentially accelerating upwards of three, four, five energy onto the board. And taking knockouts on the that who I think is gonna win this I I don't know like I really think trying to make the most of Isaiah Bradner like I I feel like Giratina's doing so well I think it's got a real shot Roaring Moon I feel like is in this weird spot where you're just trying to like figure out the right combination of cards to make it really be the best it can be I don't know that it's the best it can be um, I know Frenzy Gouging, the second attack for Roaring Moon, is an instant knockout, but it gives you 200 damage, and then you've only got 30 damage left to get knocked out. So, like, against the Charmander deck, against a Charmander that can do 30 damage, if you knock out my Charizard for two prize cards, I'll just come back with a Charmander for 30 damage to knock out your Roaring Moon. So, it's just, I, I feel like it's in this awkward spot. Um,. But, you know, you can't underestimate it at the same time right now. As early as next turn with the Sato's Vitality. Um, Alright, so you got Squawk abilities, Isaiah. use the ability oh, Squawk and Seize right to get rid of his hand and draw six cards. Uh, so he can get some fresh stuff out. Use Earth and Vessel so that he can get some energies out onto the field. Or, sorry, into his hand. Got some energies now in the hand. Energy. And this is going to be for the Iron Hands EX. Amp you very much. A uh, attack that scares all Comfey owners, <laughs> as we know that this is a great way to start to steal some additional prize cards. Well, there is that lightning going to the discard. Four concealed cards. Two more cards for Aaron here. 
drawn a lot of cards for this beginning turn, but will not have access to something like that Professor Sada's Vitality until the following turn. Looks like an Ultra Ball being eyed up. Ooh, that's two Sadas now in the discard. Yeah, that's uh, that's got to be some uh, alarms going off in Isaiah's head as he sees uh, all of these great resources being thrown away. It makes you wonder, okay, what, what is in your hands then? <laughs> <laughs> if, if that's a bad card, I'm afraid to see what's good. Just a lot of energy switches, most likely. And uh, sure enough, that's the card that we see in the window of the hand. Clarion Moltres V is going to find an additional energy by way of the Dire Flame Wings. And we know that those energies can accelerate very quickly on this board state. And Aaron also has that four Seal Stone in hand, which is more likely going to be attached to that Glarian Moltres V, so you can get some use out of that Star Alchemy, V-Star Power, being able to just grant your Pokemon V that powerful ability. Isaiah has started the Manaphy, which can be good against a surprise Moonlight Shuriken from Aaron, but starting things off with a very powerful supporter in that Colorless Experiment. Yep, this is the way that you want to start all of your turns, have that Colorless Experiment, build the hand up, and then from here, obviously looking for some of those switching effects, Battle VIP Pass, whatever it may be. Uh, we've seen Pat to the Peak occasionally as a pretty important card in matchups like these, just trying to shut off some of those additional abilities that grant Aaron some additional energies, and so maybe you could slow down maybe uh, that Radiant Greninja as well on the other side. Now Aaron does have four counter stadiums in Pokestop, trying to just speed through the deck yet again, but wow, big item here for Isaiah, that Battle VIP Pass. It's gonna allow him to find some Kumpei. But more importantly, switch the deck and figure out what's prized. Yeah, and this is the first deck search for Isaiah, so certainly need to take that time. Understand what you are working with here. Spear Tomb could be uh, an inclusion that you think about early in a matchup like this. This is something that. I All right, so Isaiah's grabbing uh, two basics. You see that uh, that Moltres on the other side. You know what? <laughs> Actually, I I don't like when you just get energies every turn. Yeah, it's almost a free bench too. You don't really need a full bench in a matchup like this. And having access to kind of just slow your opponent down with that Dire Flame Wings is always beneficial. And from there, clearly, also, you have to think about the Kumpei. Starting to burn through the deck, get more cards into the Lost Zone. Just that classic strategy of trying to reach at least four in the Lost Zone to do something impactful. But Yeah, so his strategy or, right now is really to get but four but into the Lost Zone so that he can <laughs> try to get a Cramorant online. Um, and to get that Manaphy out of the active spot. Is there another Battle VIP pass in hand? I saw red coloring. <laughs> I saw red. Is either that or what? No, 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 yeah, no, it no, is no, a no, double one. The second one here, and this hand is looking pretty good here for Isaiah. Yeah, obviously, there's some some decisions. He's got a Comfey. He's, he's probably going to grab Cramorant and Comfey. So obviously, can evolve it into the V-Star, start to apply some pressure to these higher hit point Pokemon, and maybe remove them by way of lost impact. But there's also uh, a bit of a game here where you have to start to consider: Do you want to get that to establish to sh shut down your opponent, or do you want to work in a Cramorant and try to damage these Pokemon? Maybe avoid some of that frenzied gouging, uh, which could be an issue. With or Spirit Tomb. And there we see that Spirit Tomb with its fettered in Misfortune ability. This will shut off that Galarian Moltres V. Oh, so Spirit Tomb basic really Pokemon V in play. <laughs> But it's gonna put have no abilities so Moltres here can't go get a uh, new or another energy out of the deck every turn so smart I like I like the spirit tomb I'm play there that's why they do it because they're fun oh yeah flower selecting gets rid of the water don't need that with the radiant greninja in the lost zone and we're gonna see retreat to the second come here Blatant disrespect towards Rain Splash in there. I know. How dare you, Jay? Four cards in the loss zone now after this while we're selecting. I believe there was a switch in the hand. We've already seen the energy attachment, so no abyss seeking into big knockouts on the other side. And the question now is is there a way to find a Cramorant? It does not look like that's going to be the case. Fast the turn. Still not bad, though. Four in the loss zone, but only one Giratina V on the bench. So if Aaron does find the one copy of Boss's <laughs> orders in his deck, could be able to maybe pull off a big attack. But All right, Professor Sada, Sada here. lets him go get one. energy. Attaching one energy, though. Choose up to two ancient Pokemon and attach basic energy from your discard pile to each of them. Pokestop. Look at the three cards. Keep the items in your hand. Ooh, Iron Hands went to the discard pile, though. Pokestop says, look at the top three. And whenever you have an item, you can put it in your hand. You Anything else has to go to the discard. So it's risky, but it gets you what you want. I say thinks about that rightfully so. As a, you know what, I, I don't want to be uh, tempted with this Radiant Greninja. I don't want my opponent to pull this active and uh, genome hack it at all. Yeah, uh, Mew X is one of those cards where ever since it came out, people were like, oh, your team is done for. I lost impact with genome hacking. Can't beat that, right? Right. All right. 
And this, this certainly is a matchup where you can be intimidated by this. You can be surprised by the Mew by way of Thornton. You can start to attach additional energies to it now where it's not currently a threat. But anytime that you see that Giratina V-Star, you know that the Mew could easily knock it out very next turn. Yeah, usually we only see intimidation in VGT. All right, now we're we're going to have to start <laughs> seeing some prize Ooh, cards taken. The Gyarados for the Incineroar. There we go, yeah. Assuming an Arcanine. <laughs> There's the energy from Aaron's energy side, energy if, if he wants to keep pressure on, I, I think he really needs to put pedal down. Nice to know where those resources are and thankfully playing some uh, helpful item cards like that in an engine that throws away resources left and right. Those Pokestops makes you think about the uh, the Kyogre builds of old, just burning all these resources. There's so many liabilities to, to there's so many liabilities here on Aaron's side because you've got one, two, three, four. Four, two prize cards on the field. Radiant Greninja is just a one prizer. All the rest of these are two prizers. Isaiah's in a different situation. Four of his are one prizers, and only the Giratina is a two prizer. So, uh, you know, that could buy Isaiah some time. <laughs> Earthen Vessel found off that star alchemy. This card's Ultra Ball to get to Dark Energy. This will open up concealed cards as well as that attack for the turn. And important to note, Aaron's gonna take a knockout on this Manaphy, which will open up a Moonlight Shuriken play for maybe the future, but we'll have to see him. Ooh, Boss's Orders found off the top. I like this from Aaron, Art, fanning out those different basic energies to keep track and identify that maybe you can pull those out at the right time and maybe work in one of those interesting attackers that we know of. Really debating hard here, but we do see that third energy on Roaring Moon. Okay, so Roaring Moon just a retreat to is activated. Here. And Aaron's going to take it slow. Very passive. But wow, that is you slow. You understand where this play is coming from. If this Pokemon were to be knocked out, if you lose the Roaring Moon in this spot, it does not look like you're going to have another attacker ready to roll. And that is the power of the Spirit Doom, shutting off the energy acceleration by way of the discard to the Galarian Moltres, which usually starts to share those energies with the energy switches. Well, Isaiah has so let me tell you why he did system. that. So the reason why he didn't attack here, he knows that Giratina V could be put into Giratina V star. And if Isaiah were to get 10 cards into the Lost Zone, he's at six, all he needs is four more, which is one Chorus's experiment and two Comfes could get him four more. So he knows that there's the possibility that he could get up to 10 cards in the Lost Zone, which Giratina V stars Power could instantly knock out the Roaring Moon. So had he brought up Roaring Moon instead of Greninja to knock out Manaphy to get one prize, he could have been met with Isaiah returning and knocking out his Roaring Moon. And then he really doesn't have anything on the bench at that point to return that. And that's unfortunate. So instead of putting gas on it he's playing it a little bit more like slow uh i don't know that it's necessarily the wrong move but that's just the strategy that goes into this are you going to slow play it and you're fine with the other person getting set up more and getting more of the cards in their hand that they potentially might need to beat you or are you wanting to like put pressure on and really like try to make them off, go off their game because you're you're already taking prize cards? It, yeah, it, this is definitely what separates I think you know people that play in regional tournaments and people that just play locally is thinking like that. Um, and I'm one of the people that just play locally. Uh, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. But that's why, you know, even though he got Roaring Moon set up, he didn't use it um, because he wants to play it a little bit slower. And he must be okay with Isaiah setting up his side of the board a little bit more. Experiment to start things off. It's going to mean the six in the Lost Zone and a couple more resources to the hand. Does get rid of a Roxanne, though. My but favorite flex. There is two in the list. Yep throw one away say there is no late game and that jet energy means that seven cards will be in the lost zone question is now which pokemon do you want to incorporate into the mix you have that open bench slot so maybe the pokemon like primary could get some chip damage onto the radiant greninja 
that a, a card like Escape Rope would be very nice in a spot like this. I feel like that was one of those cuts that he continued to make, and sure enough, it is. Yeah, uh, just three switch in the deck. Three switch, two switch card. And now the Kramer in play could be pretty good here if you had access to that Sableye, but it's in the prize cards towards the top, too. So having that 110 damage to stay on that Radiant Greninja might be a little troublesome. Rain Splash. <sighs> I guess you're right. I guess you're right. <laughs> Climbing it up. You can fade out twice. <laughs> Got to see all the lines. That's the beauty of Giratina. Spinning attack. <laughs> there you go. It's all right, so put another Giratina out. Set up. So it seems like a pretty solid strategy at this point in time. Now it is the Battle of the Bosses orders, it would look like. If we, you could see three Giratina V-Stars up against whatever V or EX Pokemon is on the other side. All right. Well, there is a retreat to another Kumpei Flower Selecting yet again. Plenty in the Lost Zone for Isaiah here. Does get rid of a Super Rod, finds that second Roxanne, so how to keep that card. Access to any switch or Ooh. Mirage Gates. Ooh. Ugh. Wow. That's Ooh. Well, we found a Mirage Gate. Did lose two energy. And found a Mirage Gate off the so uh, Pokestop. We do see that V Star being evolved. Okay, so V Stars. Path to the peak. Not bad here. There. Just a pass. Both of these players taking this matchup very slow, okay. trying to force the other to make the first move. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's an intimidating process. You understand that the, the counter action is right there waiting for you. Instant knockouts on both sides of the board and you're trying to map out those prize cards. The one benefit that Isaiah currently has going into this is he can just continue to build his hand. And if you hold on to cards like Boss's Orders, uh, you can take those risks like the Focus Stop, throw away, maybe find some of those item cards, which will help you close out and take those big KOs. Uh, you're not really worried about any uh, shuffling on the other side from Aaron. I think there's a Poke Gear in hand to go along with that Poke Stop. And Aaron's going to be trying to find another Professor Sada's Vitality, maybe. Maybe even just use the Boss's Orders in hand. But he needs a way to get out of the active spot. Ripping it. Ripping it. Ripping it. Needs a little bit of help here. Energy switch. Ooh, loses that Sada, though. Combination here is retreat along with boss's orders, but it's not all there. There's not even an energy to energy switch up and then have a good attacker. Can we thin the hand down enough to maybe restart for a couple cards? I think that is the line that Aaron has to consider here. I believe there's Ultra Ball. So restart is with, the with Mew, it's, it's with ability restart. That's, that's the real question here. You have to understand your energy counts in this position. Energy switch is going to be thrown away if you can fail. Mew's ability says uh, that if you have less than three cards, you draw until you have three cards in your hand. So he may use the, may get rid of a bunch of stuff in his hand just so he could use that ability to draw more cards. Good draw engine. The Interesting escape rope, escape rope yep. draw, which would hurt so bad here. Well, there's a boss's orders on the Giratina V, trying to avoid the V star knockout for now, and a big three cards off this Mew X's restart. Energy would do it, switch cart would be great, escape rope would hurt. Earth and Vessel, that's gonna do it for Aaron to be able to accomplish a big knockout this turn. Does have to discard a dark patch though. But the other Ooh. card in hand, another Dark Patch. Okay. And looks like the last two energies in the deck being found. <laughs> Look how thin the deck mm. is at this point. Aaron has not taken a prize card. He's burned through all these cards in upwards of three turns. Maybe we see a Kyogre from Aaron. Huh? <laughs> <Hold> <laughs> Someone's cooking. Yeah. Dark Patch on that Roaring Moon EX. That had no energies. Do we see the... Yeah, we can't even see the concealed cards because you don't want to discard the energy. There is the retreat. And we're going to see a Calamity Storm. All right. A big He's going to knock out the Giratina. Stop. Aaron's going to be able to find another energy from the prize cards. But other than that, not really working with much in hand. Yeah, trolling first blood there, taking that big knockout. Obviously, Isaiah will have... Uh, Isaiah the, has the, to put V-star. pressure here. Like, Isaiah's got to respond with this Giratina V-Star. Hold on to that Roxanne for the following turn and start to disrupt what Aaron's going to be working with. Because Aaron has one mission next turn to accelerate as many energies as possible onto this board. And maybe set up another Roaring Moon and get some energies onto that Mew, perhaps. Well, the ball is going to help out Isaiah finding that second Giratina V, like you were saying. We do know there's the Mirage Gate in hand already, but with quite a few energy in hand. Does look like Isaiah has enough resources, though. Oh, they're, they're all psychic, psychic energy. That is ugly. Yikes. Might settle for a Star Requiem. Well, goes back to looking at that Pokestop that we saw earlier. Oh, yeah. Lost the grass energy, but found the Mirage Gate, so win some, lose some. So far, both of these players have been winning a lot of some. <laughs> at least 10. At least 10. Both these players have a loss to give as well, at least with our calculations. 36 match points should be the safe spot for top eight. Both of these players sitting at 33. Yeah, you can tell every resource is just so important from this point. Trying to map out what is the potential that Aaron can set up really relevant Pokemon on this following turn. Get those energies down onto the Mew or the Roaring Moon on the other side. And losing the path to the peak here is pretty, pretty bad too. Yeah. It looks like it was another Mirage Gate though was the card found. Grabs just another Psychic Energy. 
yeah, you want to have a path to the peak when you use the Roxanne. It'd also be nice to just play an additional one this turn so that you could shut down maybe some additional cards down from restart or uh, the Radiant for Ninja Draw, whatever it may be. You just try to shut so down all these abilities. Get... Yep, it into the active. He could switch, knock it out. Now in the active spot, grass energy for the turn for Isaiah. And now he has the knockout with lost impact, but there wasn't 10 in the lost zone, so unable to get that Star Rocky and kind of save those energies. And two psychic energies going to lost zone. Yeah, you yep. have to worry about what Isaiah will be able to accomplish on the following turn. We already see a Giratina V Star in the lost zone, the two psychic energy there. Finding the Mirage Gates was so difficult the first time, and if you do, it's just. But now, you know, Aaron could respond by taking, getting two more energies on a Roaring Moon. Getting it in the active, which free retreat on Mew, not a problem. And then using frenzied gouging to completely knock out instant KO Giratina V Star. Yep, so there's the two more energies. And that's gonna put Isaiah in a bad way because he's struggling to find energies here. This is why energy and like resource management is so, so important. We'll be there after this knockout. And it could be as simple as a Cramorant in this spot. And you know that Roxanne is waiting on the other side, most likely too. And Isaiah still has not played Cramorant this game yet. Has access to Nest Ball in hand. That could be a great way to fetch it out. Yeah, so Nest Ball could get the Cramorant, they were saying. Uh, there's four in the Lost Zone. So it could attack Roaring Moon. For 110 because frenzy gouging put 200 damage on roaring moon so it's only got 30 health left so it's pretty low that's the risk you go with roaring moon so if he can get the comfy out of the active put up the crammer and he could knock this out for two prizes and then they both have two prizes the only thing yeah that's so that's what he did and Aaron giving up because he's like I know I'm not going to be able to get another roaring moon out and set up uh so he conceded so yeah isaiah isaiah wins the first one very nice very nice all right so let's see what we got here chorus experiment again with the lost zone you don't like seeing that we got a comfe don't love seeing that let's we'll see we got mirage gate uh, you know, that's going to be pretty crucial to getting those energies. Now, the good thing is he doesn't have a lot of energies. Uh, he's only got two in his prize uh, prize cards. Now, what's big over here for Aaron is the pokey stops. Uh, and honestly, that's about it. Two pokey stops out of probably four are in the prize cards. Now, if he can take the first two prize cards, typically what they do is take... The bottom two prize cards first so he'd probably get both of those whenever he took his first prize cards um so it'll be interesting to see what he does there so aaron's going first he's got the roaring moon battle vip pass to go grab two more basics he's probably gonna grab but uh Another Roaring Moon, most likely. No, Squawkabilly and... Okay, he's got another Battle VIP Pass. We'll get the Moltres. And Iron Hands. Interesting. So you may be trying to take two prize cards from Comfey. So Iron Hands has the Amp you very much attack which if the opponent's pokemon gets knocked out uh from that attack you get an additional prize card so all one prize card one prizer cards turn into two prizer cards if you were to knock out a v max card with that attack it would take four prize cards because v maxes are worth three prize cards normally that's interesting that's pretty interesting but yeah, so he ended up getting another Roaring Moon out. So now it's a matter of can he get enough energies onto the Iron Hands. Uh, what's interesting is he's putting energies on his Radiant Greninja. And pa 
passes. I don't know what he's going for there. If he was going to do the Iron Hands, why he would put them on Greninja? I guess maybe... I don't, I don't understand that. So we go over to Isaiah, who's, you know, doing the usual Lost Zone thing. Uses Colrus's experiment. Looks like there's a Cramorant, there was an energy. What else did he have in there? So he's getting rid of a switch and an energy. That Pokemon into the Lost Zone. Maybe there are considerations this time to continue to accelerate and draw more. Okay, he's got and you may be wondering switch why card in the Lost Zone. Down that battle VIP pass right away, but that's because with a deck like this, you want to try to find as many basic Pokemon as possible in the beginning stages. So if you send out some of the basic Pokemon, you're just worsening your odds. Yep. Any time that you draw into another Kumpe, uh maybe even that Spiritomb, whatever it may be, that's just one less card that you have to find off the battle VIP pass. You can add those additional Pokemon okay. to your bench, and then you can build that perfect five that you're looking for. Aaron was able to do so with their board pretty easily, uh, but I guess that's just how things work when you have triple VIP. <laughs> Isaiah's first deck search here is going to take a quick look, see what's prized, what resources you have available. That Sableye is in the deck now. Spiritomb is also there. And Isaiah does have access to Jet Energy in hand. Okay, I was going to say, there's one very important Pokemon we haven't seen just yet. <laughs> the Manaphy. We need Manaphy this time around. Look at Aaron's board. You see that Radiant Greninja juiced up. And uh, that would be very bad to lose that Pokemon, especially when you want to consider playing down a Spiritomb in a spot like this. There's just a lot of low hit point Pokemon that could be easily knocked out and uh, turn the tide of this so, game. Giratina is one of the basics. One of the cards here, but do we see that very important Manaphy? If we see Manaphy, that means no second Kumpei, which means no Spit Innocently. Do you Jet Abyss Seeking? Oh, it's so rough. I, I guess that leaves just one knockout in play for I'm not sure. Like and then double Giratina V. Maybe yes. we are going to see it. I like this a lot. This is a strategy where uh, you see your opponent go for the Moonlight Shuriken. It's like, okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so what's no happening there is left. we talked about Greninja's attack does 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon, right? So he sees that Aaron is, Isaiah sees Aaron is beefing up that Radiant Greninja. And then what's happening is Isaiah is saying, uh, no, I don't think I'll be putting out something that you could take. Because now, even if he were to use, if Aaron were to use Radiant Greninja's Midnight Shuriken move, he would only really be able to knock out this card, but damage one of the others. So... It wouldn't necessarily be worth it at all. Energies are so important. <laughs> Last time he had nine in the discard pile in turn three to four, and here he has zero. I'll be back. Which leads to the clunking I'll keep as we watching. talked about throughout this tournament. You need to draw all these cards in the right order. It's just not happening. And they're switching effect number four right now for Isaiah. Uh, and there goes another Jet energy into the loss zone. There's another Comfey in hand along with that Kramer ramp. It, so you just play the Cramorant at this point I mean, and just start you just, attacking? You just rip the Colrus and I mean, that would work start too. going to town. Ooh, a lot of energies in that those seven cards. That would have been a great Mirage Gate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Mirage Gate would be as good if you had to look at the top seven and take energies from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe that's how we balance it. Maybe. <laughs> so no Colrus's experiment just yet for Isaiah. Might have to do a little more digging. Maybe get another Kumpei in play just so you can flower selecting. But again, that means two Pokemon that can be easily knocked out. And there's the last <laughs> switch from Isaiah. No more getting out of the spot unless it's a jet energy. And I think that was Kramer. No, Kramer, it's already in the hand. Yeah, Kramer's in hand. Manaphy? Manaphy? Yeah. Blue guy? I mean, there's three blue Pokemon in the list, and one's in play, one's in hand. Blue yeah, there guy. we go. Manaphy. Pretty big pickup if Aaron's able to find something like an Earthen Vessel next turn. Yeah, that is the one card that Aaron is truly missing at this point. It would activate everything from here on out. Well, here we see that Mirage Gate. Gonna be able to charge up this Giratina V, but Isaiah still needs a way to retreat. I think we might see a second Mirage Gate just so you can retreat the Gumpei. Energy on Giratina V or not. Psychic energy and the water on the active. Yep. Likely meaning grass energy in hand for the attachment for the turn. Thinking of every energy as obviously this was an issue in game number one with all the psychic energies remaining. We do see the second Mirage Cape. A couple energy on the bench, Giratina V. Spread out the extra resources you have available to you. Hopefully, you get a couple attacks off if Aaron does have something. I mean, there's a possibility Aaron just brings up Greninja and retreats just to get an energy in the discard so you can Sada. Yeah, I mean, those are all things that Isaiah is considering, and I think you still feel comfortable in a spot like this. It's pretty likely that your uh, your Giratina will stick around at this point, but even if it doesn't, you have the secondary one to follow. This is a strong board presence from Isaiah here. Two Giratina V-Stars essentially powered up. Manaphy along with it. Yeah. 
Two energy to the Lost Zone, but that's going to power up Lost Impact for the following turn, just needing one more by way of course or Flower Selecting. Yeah, this is a very crucial turn for Aaron. If the pieces align, obviously the Retreat opens up some, some of the draws. But if you can take the knockout this turn, there's a window. Isaiah only has a 3-3 line of Giratina V-Star. We see the, the V-Star in the Lost Zone already. If you knock out this Pokemon, there's a world where you run out and there is no closing final two prize cards for Isaiah unless you start attacking with Cramorant sadly into nothing. Aaron needs Earthen Vessel off those three cards, but I don't know if he found it just yet. Oh, there is an energy. Two more cards yet again. Maybe four Seal Stone, anything at this point just to help out. No, there's been a couple of Poke Gears, which aren't very good after you already played your Sporter yeah. for the turn. We already have that piece. Dark Patch in hand, but that Roaring Moon is in the active spot here. Nest Ball is going to be able to search the deck. Just a fail, though. You have access to Tire Flame Wings, no Spirit Tomb in play, Dark Patch. But again, the complete opposite of game one, where Aaron was just flooded with energies in the first few turns. This is definitely not that game. Yep. All right. I'm eating, so I'll save you from seeing me eat. But I'll come in with active. different now things. So, benefit that you know your opponent is struggling with the switching effects. So, we got. So, okay, Isaiah took two prize cards. Nice, nice. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to get things up to 10 so that he can turn on Giratina's ability. Or excuse me, V-Star attack. Sitting and waiting. Yep, starts to look a little like a checkmate situation. The main attacks that are going to produce those additional prize cards would be uh, a V or EX Pokemon attacking, be two prize cards remaining. You already see that the V-Star will be available in this situation. And you could even use the Jet Energy on the bench Pokemon, bring that active and just lost impact, throw away the Jet and the Water, and then both these Pokemon are ready to take the final knockout. However you want to do it, this will do the exact same thing. And there is that lost impact, and the writing is on the wall for Aaron here. No way to knock out both of these Giratina V-Star in this turn. And honestly, no way for Aaron to really get an attack off right now. Yeah, we need a, we need a knockout for Pride at this point. And it has not. <laughs> That's pretty big for getting like uh, two Giratina V stars just like ready to go. Because now, okay, you've only got two prize cards left. You're Isaiah. You're like, I can boss up the Squawkabilly, Moltres, or Iron Hands EX, or Mew. And I've got two Giratina V stars geared up, ready to go to take away whatever I need. And I've got another Roaring Moon. I mean, look, if you're Aaron, you're in bad shape for sure. Definitely play it out to see what would happen, but it's not a great situation right now. For how locked up Isaiah has this game, he looks very worried for some reason. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's considering at this point, <laughs> but uh, maybe, let him do his thing. Maybe what concession snack to got. Yeah, okay. Dark patch number one. Essentially two. I think it was two. Speaking of the concessions, I heard the cinnamon rolls are going hey, crazy. Hey, what, yeah, what is up with Isaiah's uh, hands? Look at this. Some, you know? All right, well, let it be known. There, there will be cinnamon rolls. Homie's got, like, bloody knuckles right there. What in the world? Four seal stone, and it's just uh, continuing this turn. Triple draw from the Pokestop here. It's, I mean, that is exactly what you'd want. Three turns ago, <laughs> all the resources <laughs> finally lining up. You have this uh, Mew ready to move out of the active spot. Friends of Gouging ready for a knockout. The only issue is, I say it doesn't have to pick 12 prize cards to win a game, only six. That would be rough. He's down for the challenge. Who knows? What is it? Dialga Palkia Legend or something? Oh, yeah. Like that? We've seen, we've seen some <laughs> nightmare situations. The graphics would not be prepared. Oh, my gosh. Could you imagine if we had something like that nowadays? <laughs> well, that's why we're not on the design team. For those of you at home, uh, there's a Pokemon that just added a couple more prize cards to your opponent. You can do that attack multiple times. But 16 prize cards at one point. Yeah, Zerkatry was enough for me. I'm okay, I'm okay <laughs> with this. Just six prize cards. That's what Aaron has on his side of the board. In a game state that is upwards. Basically unwinnable from here. But obviously, you're playing for pride at this point. Your deck has been fantastic, winning 11 matches so far. You know what it's capable of. You gotta at least get yourself a little bit of content, showing some knockouts. Hey, uh, more, more time taken off means uh, less time we have to just talk. Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah, more time for cinnamon rolls. I'm not exactly sure why Aaron's taking so long. I mean, writing is on the wall here. I guess he's just playing every possible out. 
Okay, he's going to take two prizes here. So he brought up Radiant Greninja. He knocks out... Whoa. Yeah, okay, I was going to say... Nice. Okay. Nicely done by Isaiah Bradner.